All right, we are back. And this time I have come with our co-host and he can introduce himself now. <laughs> uh, William Numbanga, I'm a, uh, one of the ISS advisors, International Student Service advisors here in the office. And I'm able to help with uh, a lot of questions about your DS 2019s, your I-20s, and anything else that I may be of assistance. I believe Ken's brought me on so that way I can respond to any questions about different things. He's got a topic for us to talk about. Mm -hmm. So I'm just here to provide assistance and respond to any questions. Awesome. Yeah, we are very glad to have him. Because like I said, this isn't my field of expertise. Okay. So William, he, he can really help out in this one. Oh, well, I'll see what I can do. I'm, I'm no <laughs> expert, but I've got some experience. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to our little presentation that we have. All right, so like I said, welcome back to our Seasider series. The theme for this week is daily life in Hawaii, and today we are talking about banking and money. All right, so specifically today, uh, we'll be going over things specifically about banking, like how to set up a bank account for international students. And we're talking about the debit cards and their uses. We'll also talk a little bit about um, setting up a credit card because that's something that students can do if they want to. And we'll touch a little bit on investing. because That's another thing that students can also do and it's something that's good to get involved with. And then lastly, we'll talk about fraud and scams because we know that a lot of international students can sometimes be targeted um, of different frauds and scams. So it's important to watch out for those. Okay. All right. So first, there's a little overview of banking. So uh, for international students, you know, banking is a, a way to safely store money, to set up debit cards and credit cards and and I mean, it has many other uses as well. Um, but having a bank account is pretty essential for, for daily life. And opening a US bank account uh, is a, a very good idea for new international students to do. And so we recommend that, you know, soon after you arrive to, to set up a, a bank account here on the island. Mm. And I want to add, I, I think the closest bank that we have. I know uh, there's an American Savings Bank. They have a branch right there in, in uh, Foodland that's currently under renovation. And I have a friend at the in the AS or works for ASB, and he mentioned that on the 26th of this month that branch will open again. So by the time you make it back to campus, or if you are already on campus, uh, on the 26th of this month that branch will be reopened for service, so you're able to go and open a, a bank account there. Uh, the good thing with American Savings is that they have a uh, ATM machine right here at the um, at the Aloha Center, so it's very convenient for you if you want to withdraw cash on campus. You have your debit card, ATMs right here. Reduce you know the the uh, the risk of uh, having to spend extra on fees. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, yeah, and that's kind of talks about some of the advantages of having a bank account, and just like you mentioned, saving on fees and Building credit, getting financial aid, it helps with all those things. Yeah. And oh, okay, you got yeah, that. So, yeah, actually, Sweet. just like uh, just like William was talking about. So he was talking about the American Savings Bank in Foodland, which mm -hmm. is opening soon, I guess. Yeah. But there's another bank I would suggest, and the reason why, um, well, another maybe one or two, and, and uh, unfortunately they don't have any branches here in Laie, but they have branches in Kanyoi, and they're the credit unions. There's the Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. And the Hawaii State Federal Credit Union. And now, why I recommend those credit unions is because a lot of the fees are very low mm -hmm. compared to the to the normal banks. Uh, fees for, for you know maintaining accounts, uh, annual fees for different things. So it that's probably best that you shop around. But if you're looking for convenience, obviously American Savings is right there in Foodland. Uh, Kahuku, they have the uh, First Hawaiian Bank, which is just around the corner. Oh, I didn't realize that U.S. citizens are required. American Savings, I think, caters for international students as well, and, and these other banks. So yeah, for the for the first Hawaiian, I was just looking on the online application, and it said U.S. citizenship required. So I don't know if you could talk to them and maybe work that out because I don't know if I was looking at a student account either. But yeah, 
they could have they could have one for, for students or international students. Mm. But, uh, it it's probably best uh, when you do come and, and the time. I'm not too sure. Usually, when we have a new student orientation, we've invited the banks to come on campus. Mm -hmm. So that could be a time for you to, you know, ask questions. Uh, I'm sure that you can open an account. So it might be something that we could check with National yeah. to see if banks are, uh, are expected to be on campus uh, during the uh, new student orientation time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are just a few of the examples of the banks, the ones that are nearby. Yeah. For you as an international student, let's just say um, you, if you need, or if you open a bank account here, and then there's a possibility of family contributions having come through, or your family internationally wants to send you money, um, you know, there's certain information that you need, like the account number and the routing number and certain things. So when you do open your accounts, pay attention to a lot of those details, because if family members obviously say, hey, I want to send you some money for, for Christmas or something, um, you just want to make sure you provide the, the right information. Mm -hmm. All right, and so then we can talk a little bit about opening a bank account, and it, it varies for you know different different banks and whatever different type of account here. But there are some general usual requirements that they often have. Yeah. So first of all, there's kind of two main types that you would probably be getting. There's a checking account and savings account, and the checking account is the one that's going to get you a debit card and that you can connect to wherever you're working for direct deposit and uh, things like that. And so that's the one that you'll probably be using the most. Um, and so uh, most of the banks, at least according to the you know, stuff that I was looking at for international students starting uh, bank accounts, they often require you to bring a passport, your visa, uh, some type of proof of enrollment in the school, such as your student ID, um, Do they need this DS 2019 or the I-20? I'm not sure. Okay. They might. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But, and then a U.S. address, you just use your school address once you're here. And, and then to start a bank account, they usually require you to have a, a minimum deposit to put into the account. So what is it usually? Run about 100 bucks? 25, 50 bucks? I guess yeah. different banks vary, but I'm... I'm I, Expect to put down at least a minimum of 100 bucks to open up a bank account. Yeah. And yes, and I was looking at a lot of them, and a lot of them can be started online, but um, as you can start the application for a bank account online. Um, but, you know, of course, you might also be required to meet in person to fully set up the bank account. And well, you, you got to provide documentation mm -hmm. as you open your account. But, you know, the good thing with a lot of these banks, or well, at least the ones that we've mentioned here locally, is that they have an app. So, you know, I don't know if you've had that in the presentation, but an app is helpful if you're mm -hmm. checking uh, balances, uh, updating, you know, records and, and so forth. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll continue on, I guess, with the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I have on my phone as well. Perfect. My yeah. bank account app, and yeah. it's very nice. Yeah. All right, and so if you open up a checking account, there are, um, you know, different, features of it and different uses that you can do with it. So like we mentioned, you'll you get a debit card if you uh, open up a checking account, which you can use to pay for, you know, at stores and mm -hmm. online things. You know, a lot of times now, especially here in the US, you probably be purchasing or paying for stuff online, different fees, maybe for, for an exam that you have to take, or you may need to order a book online on Amazon it's helpful to have that debit card because the debit card is pretty much like a visa card, but it just uses the money that you put in the account. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure some of you may have had debit cards, but that's how it works. It, it's a debit card that's, that has your money, but you can use it like a visa card or a, like a credit card and pay for stuff online. You, you would be expecting to be using that a lot because you, there's a lot of things that you can pay, order online directly, or on Amazon, or books while you're here. Um, online shopping has become pretty much the norm here in the US. And so it's, it's critical for you to be able to secure and open up a bank account and get a debit card up and running um, at the early stages. Don't wait and, and just operate in cash. Not a lot of places accept cash. 
mm-hmm. because it's more safer to be able to, to hand over um, a credit card and get all the details. So something for you guys to think about. Yeah, I uh, I use my debit card almost for like almost everything that I buy. I mean, so mm-hmm. Don't use cash super often. Anymore. Um, but yeah, so there's the debit card. They, of course, you can get online depositing into your bank account from work and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, and once you have a checking account, you can also use ATM machines to take cash out or make deposits into your account. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that if the ATM is not from your bank, then you're going to have a fee to use it. You're going to get charged. I think what's the average fee now? It's probably about three to four dollars yeah. per transaction. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I think the last I heard from Bank of Hawaii, or at least when I saw it, if it was a uh, an account other than uh, a Bank of Hawaii or Hawaii USA, then you're paying about three dollars and seventy five cents on top. So something to think about if you're if you're withdrawing twenty dollars at, at at a time, um, that's you're withdrawing at least. $20 in cash plus another $3.75 in fees. So in total, $23.75 is the news out of your account. So when, you, when you're withdrawing money, you just have to be mindful um, how much money you want to withdraw at one time because you may want to withdraw at least 100 if you're going to use it over that, that time so you don't have to keep withdrawing and using up. You know, every time you, you take 20 bucks out with that three seventy five, dollars it adds up over time. And at the end of the month, you could be paying up to 30 to 50 bucks in fees. Mm -hmm. And that's money you could use as a student. So just plan carefully how you manage your money, how you manage your withdrawals, so that way you don't use up a lot of these fees. Or the best thing is if you're attached to a bank, look for the ATM for that bank so that way there's no fees. Mm -hmm. So these are things just just being smarter with your money. Yep. And uh, just like we'll talked about on campus, we have ATMs of First Hawaiian Bank, the Bank of Hawaii, and the American Savings. So, which one is the First Hawaiian Bank there? Is it is that at the Aloha Center? I know Bank of Hawaii American Savings is there. First Hawaiian is at PCC. Yeah, it might be there. Yeah, but down in in, in Laie at the shopping center, there's First Hawaiian at the shopping center, Bank of Hawaii, and American Savings. Mm-hmm. So you got you know if it's not on campus. There's, uh, there's one, at, well, no, I think the PCC one is the first one, one is shut down, but there's one at the Lightyear Shopping Center, or three at the Lightyear Shopping Center that you have access to. Mm-hmm. Just so that way you know where to withdraw cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing about checking accounts, especially student checking accounts, is that they often have a spending limit. So mm-hmm. there's a maximum amount of money that you can use per day. Yeah, use per day. What, what is it usually, like 300 bucks? Or there's a max you can withdraw in one time. Mm-hmm. I think it's it depending. Most of the banks are 300. Uh, First Hawaiian is 500. So these are some things that you yeah. need to, to be mindful of. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, yeah, there's like a max for like the maximum withdrawal. charges you can make yeah. or withdrawal. Yeah. And then there's also like a max of you might can spend like in a day as well. Some of the time. Good practice for you not to be carrying cash. Every time, uh, I would recommend you take your credit card or your debit card around because if it's misplaced, you can always call your bank and, and either put the card on hold or get a replacement. If, if once you lose cash, it's very hard for you to track where that cash went. So it's good practice for you to have that debit card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then finally with the checking account and debit card, there are possible fees that could come up depending on what you're doing and what account you got with what bank. So. Some accounts will have a, a monthly service fee, so you'll just get charged a fee just for having the account each month. But I think most student accounts don't have a monthly service fee, but still something to, to look out for. Well, these, this, this is the advantage of looking at those credit union accounts mm-hmm. because a lot of them are free, no, no service fee every, every month. Okay. And then also if you overdraft, so this is if you make a purchase with more money than is in your account, then you'll get charged for that as well. Yeah, be careful with that one because they, they give you an overdraft option, but what happens with overdraft is that um, you uh, you incur fees and then sometimes you, you either have the option of an overdraft 
or you have the option where there's no money in your account, it will decline when you make a purchase. So, you know, these, these are things you have to be mindful of. When you overdraft, sometimes students will keep saying, oh, wow, I still have money in the account without realizing actually you, you're using the bank's money now, not your own money. Yeah. And um, when, when you do that, there's a lot of fees that are associated to that. So as a first time bank account you know, holder, you may not have access to overdraft facilities, but some banks may offer to trade up. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be mindful when you're talking, you know, uh, when you're opening the account, check for these things, the fees, the spending limits, where the ATMs are located, uh, the overdraft facilities, all that kind of stuff. That will kind of help you determine which bank account and which bank you need to open the bank account. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, moving on, we'll talk a little bit about uh, credit cards and just kind of what they are and um, yeah, what they're used for. Mm -hmm. So like we mentioned in the beginning, uh, credit card isn't something that you necessarily have to get, but it can be a very good thing for, for building credit. And we'll talk about what credit is in a second, um, but you have to be import important. You have to be careful with a credit card because if you don't make the payments, then it could be bad for your future as well. Yeah. And what you have to do is you have to pay attention to the, uh, to the uh, what is it called, the interest, mm -hmm. the, the, the APR uh, rate on the card, because it ranges from 15, 12, 13, 15%, all the way up to 29%. So sometimes, you know, credit cards will make it very convenient for you where you just pay the minimum. But when you're paying the minimum every month, you're only just paying the fees and the interest. You're not actually paying down your debt. And if you've used, if you've got a credit limit of say a thousand or two thousand dollars in a credit card, the credit limit comes from the bank. It's not your money; it's the bank's money. So every time you use their money, you know they 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 will say, "Oh, just pay the minimum." But by the time you pay the minimum, <laughs> sometimes you you fall in the trap where you haven't paid any of your debt down and you keep using it. And so just be very, very careful. Credit cards are good if you're building credit, but if you want to manage your money and if you want to be very careful, you don't need a credit card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like we talked about for building credit, the credit is basically credit score is like this score that you get that's based off of your previous credit payments and a bunch of other factors as well. But, uh, Couple Basically. of things. Late payments mm -hmm. will determine how good and bad your score is. Uh, utilization, what I mean by utilization is if you say hey, you have a $2,000 credit limit and you're pretty much maxed out on your $2,000, that will show that your utilization is almost 100%. So a good credit score person will usually have a minimum of 20% utilization. So which means out of the 2,000, you've only used about 400, which is about 20%. Okay. Okay. So that's the general rule if you've got a credit card and, and if you want to maintain a good score, keep your, your limit as a, at about 400 bucks. Okay. Yeah. If, when you start getting into the 60, 70, 80% uh, usage or utilization, that will kill, you'll kill your, your score. and why the scores are important when you know later on you may want to purchase a, a vehicle or you want to apply for for something uh who knows what your circumstances will be at the time but a good credit score 700 and above will be able to help you gain access to the financing and the capital that you need so this is something you may not be thinking about straight away but if you can put the good practices on how to manage your credit card how to, how to maintain good credit score, that will help you in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, and this is where Will's expertise really helps me too. <laughs> about this. I don't actually even have a credit card, but I think I should give it You should, and if you, if I, I, I would recommend, a, a good place that a lot of students will probably utilize a credit card um, here in Hawaii is Costco. Okay, if, if some of you don't have, know what Costco is, you will know when you get here in Hawaii <laughs> because it's a, it's a great place to, uh, to pay stuff and buy in bulk. 
So you get good price for a lot of stuff. And usually you you, you hear about a lot of students uh, in the weekend with, you know, pull together some of their resources, jump on a vehicle and stuff. So we're going to build Costco run, which means they're getting cereal, they're getting milk, they're getting all kinds of stuff because you can buy in bulk. Okay. The good thing with Costco is that they have a credit card as well, and it's all issued by Citibank. And so the cost, the credit card is also your membership. And you have to pay annual membership for to be a Costco member. But the good thing about that is that every time you're spending, you generate points. You know? And then at the end of the year, you get money back um, in the form of a check from Costco for points that you generated. These are things we can talk about later. There's a lot of more information. You know, I, I can't do justice by telling you in a couple of minutes what, what it is, but just kind of in general, what those credit cards will be, what they use for, and what what you'll be um, what you'll be engaging when you're here yeah. in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all these things, you know, we could talk for a long time, mm -hmm. but we just wanted to give you guys a you know, a brief idea and give you things to think about. Um, and if you are thinking about, or if you ever are thinking about getting a credit card, um, they usually require you to have a social security number. So if you're a brand new international student, you won't have one, but once you start working, you can get one. Yeah, and with a certain credit score, you may not have established credit at the start, but what once you worked, you have you developed uh, employment history, banking history with your bank, let's just say within a year, it's a good chance that you, you can go on a for credit card. That's if you want to, okay? So your credit score and stuff will be determined by how your banking history and all that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then just kind of like the different bank accounts there, with credit cards, there's so many different you know, programs and like you talked about, like with Costco, some of them have different rewards for you. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them have different types of fees as well. So store credit cards. Um, there's also airline, you know, mm -hmm. Delta. Uh, they 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 offer credit cards as well. Southwest, mm -hmm. so different ones. So these are these are things I, I want you to be mindful, but be careful also. You know, we we do want to put a disclaimer out there. We we're not advocating for any of these places. Mm -hmm. But we're just showing, uh, sharing our experience on how to better use and manage your credit cards and your, your payments and your credit score, all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Invested. Moving on, we'll talk a little bit about investing. Uh, this is something you know you might already know some about because you don't necessarily have to be in the U.S. to invest in things. But it's something that is good for students to start thinking about and. Okay. I was wondering, Kaden, for a lot of international students, I know I, I know some international students that have, that have investments in stocks. And, you know, if they know what they're doing, there's some classes in finances that will help you mm -hmm. with, with uh, how to invest in stocks and all that kind of stuff. And so um, I don't know if it's something that we, uh, we are pushing, but it's, in, it's there mm -hmm. if you wanted yeah. to. To look into and some of the courses that you would take, especially in finance, accounting, will teach you about some of these things. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship as well. And so it's there if you wanted to utilize it, but you also got to be mindful of your risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this, like the investing and the last thing, the credit cards, these aren't things that we're saying, you know, you should do or that we, you know, highly encourage or anything. These are just things, you know, we wanted to discuss because we know some students. My thing you're about gonna, that. You're, yeah, you, you're going to hear it from other students that are here that are mm -hmm. currently doing these things, cryptocurrency, mutual funds, and stocks, and so on. It, it doesn't surprise you when you hear about those things. We've talked to you about it now. We're giving you a heads up. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that you want to research further, talk to your friends, but be careful. Like any financial product, there's, there's opportunities, but there's also risks. Mm -hmm. Just have to be mindful what your respons personal responsibility is when it comes to this money. Do you yeah. own money? Exactly. You can watch over the list. And so yeah, all these are different types of investments kind of and you know you might have heard about the cryptocurrency, Dogecoin, Bitcoin recently, but 
Uh, those ones are even more risky than so how, so. how many shares you have in crypto? Uh, <laughs> I don't have any right okay. now. I used to have some Bitcoin, but right. <laughs> and I have a friend who's really obsessed with those things. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah. Talk to this guy. If you want to Benet, Benet, our uh, our student manager who has been in some of the Seasider series, he really he really likes Robinhood, which okay. is an app for okay. getting stocks. Yeah. Uh, Web pull is another one. There's, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. wanted me to include them. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so that's just a little bit about investing. But if yeah, just if you do do that, just like Will said, you know, be wary of the risk. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. All right. Uh, lastly, we want to touch on fraud and scams because, like we mentioned in the beginning, sometimes we get calls from students who, you know, are like, I think I might. Someone's trying to ask for my information. And they don't know if it's a scam or not. So, you know, we wanted to we want our international students to be safe from these things. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what uh, a lot of the common ones. If you're using social media, if you're using Facebook, sometimes your your account could get hacked. You know, um, I've been using um, Facebook Pay to be able to send and receive funds to, to different friends and family members. It's attached to your Facebook account. But the problem is when your Facebook account gets hacked, what happens to your Facebook pay account? So these are some things you have to be mindful of in, when it comes to fraud and scams and, and what you, how you're using things online. Um, so that's, you know, your, your social media accounts being hacked. Um, people soliciting services to you, selling products and services. You've got to be mindful of what, uh, what those are. You know, sometimes people offering you uh, jobs, you know, come and, come and do some work and, and you know, we'll pay you. We, we get it through email all the time, you know, people offering jobs to students. So you just got to be careful. Even um, I've had friends who, you know, people email and says, look, I, I have some funds that I need to transfer from an international country uh, into the U.S., but in order for me to send the funds, I need the, I, I need some money to be able to help the funds to be released from those banks. When you get those kinds of emails, you know that it, it, it doesn't sound um, right. I would suggest you block it or delete those mm -hmm. emails. You, you'll get it. I, I get it all the time. You know, and, and unfortunately, because you're not you know, aware or educated, you may be sucked into the scams, and next thing you know, you're sending money because you're believing that there's some money that's going to be released back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the time, they, they they might say like you won a prize, or like you said, yeah. like offer you a job. Yeah. But then, like they'll say, in order to get it, they need some type of personal information or account number. So if they're asking for things like, how would you know? How would your account be connected to? Yeah. To getting a job or, or click, something. Click here to verify your account so that way we can send you the money. Mm -hmm. In any email that's been sent to you, if someone's asking for your social security number, verify it. And there's, there's a likelihood that they shouldn't be asking for a social security number over the phone mm -hmm. because your social security number is your identity. Once your social security number is compromised, your 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 identity can be hacked. So identity theft is a real problem here in the US. If you're not careful, your social security, your identity can be used and, and uh, you know, fake accounts can be created under your name. Next thing you know, there's a loan under your name that you don't even know about and someone is utilizing your identity. So these are some things that we want you to be mindful. We don't have too many details. I'm sure there's some classes here on campus that talk about these things. But there's a lot of information online as well that you can find out for yourself. Just but we wanted to give you a heads up. Yep. Yeah, so that's about most of the stuff that we have prepared, but now we have time for questions. So if you guys have any questions for us about any of the stuff we discussed or anything else that you might have a question about, then uh, now is the time to ask. And we have an advisor with us too, so we'll give you the, I'll try the top and quality. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try to do the best I can. <laughs> so far away at those questions.
think they fully understood our presentation. <laughs> oh, yeah. there's a question in the chat. Yeah, probably some options. Is there Bank of America or Wells Fargo in Hawaii? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the big banks that are on the mainland, they're not really here. Like my bank, I, my bank account is from home, it's from Chase Bank. Pretty big on the mainland. Yeah. There's not and there's a lot of branches, Chase branch. Yeah. yeah. But not in Hawaii. They used to be, Bank of America used to be, Wells Fargo used to be in Hawaii, but not anymore. Any other questions? Hmm. I, I, I think. <laughs> I think we must have done a tremendous job <laughs> that everybody fully understood what we're talking about and, and don't have any questions. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm surprised. This is one of the more complicated topics. <laughs> We're getting less questions than normal. Okay, here we go. What banks are good for building credit for traveling? Um, building credit. I wouldn't say banks that will be building credit for traveling. I would say, let's just say, for example, you want to travel to the mainland. And the common airline traveling to the mainland from here, uh, Southwest or uh, Delta. And I know for, from personal experience, I have a, a, a Delta American Express card, uh, credit card. And so with my Delta American Express card, every time I travel on Delta, I don't have to pay for bags. I get, um, you know, I get to check in early. I, I get to board early. You know, so there's a lot of benefits that uh, that you have with a credit card if your credit card is affiliated to that airline. So that's probably that will be my recommendation for you if you're wanting to open a bank account or at least open an account um, for traveling. The good thing about the uh, American Express or at least a credit card affiliated to an airline is that you're building credit, it's a credit card. So you know, you're strengthening your score every time you use it. The key for building credit using a credit card is, let's just say you have a $500 credit limit, you use up the $500 for the month and make sure you pay the whole $500 so that way you use it for the next month. Okay? That activity, that, util that utilizing it fully and paying it in full builds your credit up so fast that you'll, you'll see your, your credit score shoot up. But that's something, if you're planning to, to do some traveling while in the US, look at the common airlines. Hawaiian Airlines has a credit card. Um, Delta has a credit card through American Express. Uh, Southwest has a credit card. I won't, I'm not too sure which company could be city, but a lot of these airlines, um, maybe American Airlines as well. A lot of these airlines have their own credit cards so I suggest if you're interested in travel and you want to generate um, points for travel, you want to get benefits for travel, you want to also build credit for travel, that would be my recommendation. Rather than opening up a bank account, open up, uh, apply for a credit card through the, the relevant airline. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Okay. Does the debit card serve similar purposes as a credit card, such as making payments through debit card? Making? Yes, the debit card and the credit card is pretty much the same thing. The only difference with a debit card and a credit card is a debit card is your money. Let's just say you open up a bank account with a hundred bucks or 500 bucks or a thousand dollars. Your credit limit on your debit card is the money that you put in your bank. The credit card is the, um, the, the credit limit that the bank gives you. They may give you 500, they may give you 1,000, they may give you 3,000. Depending on how good your credit score is will determine how big of a credit limit you get, okay? So that's the difference. But when you're using it to pay for stuff online, if you're buying for stuff, you go to the store, you purchase using your credit card or your debit card, it, used, it acts the same way because you have a credit number, you have a card number. You have an expiration date, you have your name, and you have a security code at the back. Those are the four things that both on a credit card and a debit card that's used when you're verifying for purchases. So yes, they both act the same way, but one just uses your own money 
two uses the bank's money. Yeah. You still have to make monthly. Well, with the debit card, every time your pay comes from your work, from your student job, make it direct deposit it into your checking account, and that's what your debit card is. So every time you make those payments. So yeah. yeah. Does that answer your question? I hope that answers the question. I think it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Thank you for all your questions so far. Uh, well, there's a few more. There's a few more. I think those are all the ones. Since my question, we couldn't make payments with debit card right there. What's that one? That was part of the one. Uh, okay. Go, 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 go. Uh, okay. Um, you guys have other questions? Yes. What's the time to do it? If you ask me what my opinion is for the stock market today, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, to have a higher leverage, we can use credit cards often and just pay every month, right? Higher leverage. I, I don't know what you mean by higher leverage. What do you mean like a higher credit score? If they, yeah. Yeah, if you pay it off every month. Yeah. Then... Yeah. Like I mentioned before, you have a $500 credit limit and you use that for gas, you use that for food, you use that for entertainment, you purchase a few things online, and by the end of the month, you've used up, let's just say, 450 bucks. What would be good practice for you if you've already budgeted 450 bucks for those types of purchases? Don't pay, pay using cash. Use your credit card or your debit card and then replenish it. If you're building credit, it's probably better to, to do it on a credit card with that limit. But, but get in a good practice of paying your credit card full rather than paying the minimum. Don't get sucked into that trap of, oh, I can only meet the minimum and that's okay. Look at the interest rate. Okay, look at the interest rate on your card. And if the interest rate is in the 29s, the 26s and stuff, all you're doing when you're making those monthly payments is the interest on the purchase. You're not paying principal. Those are two things, two, two words you got to remember. Principal, interest. Principal is the actual money that you owe. Interest is the money that the bank tags on and makes money from you. And I mean, I'm not completely sure <laughs> since i don't have one but if you pay it in full do they still, do they charge any interest or like if you pay it immediately no the, you you have each credit card has a um what you call they have a time frame on when you when you can make payments mm -hmm. that it doesn't use up any interest or it uses up minimum interest mm -hmm. but the longer you leave it yeah and you know that, that it will accrue interest because you and you will see on the on your credit card statements as well it'll tell you um, interest on payments. Uh, there's different descriptions on on what interest is and you're charging. There's extra fees for here and there. So the, the good practices and to be safe, when you use up the, the, the limit, pay it off in full every month. Don't don't just pay a little bit. You're going to get stuck. All right, yeah, thank you for that question. Any more questions? Any other questions, guys? That's, yeah. If there's not any other questions, then we'll start to wrap up, I guess. Uh, so we thank you guys for coming to our Seasider series today, and we thank you for all the questions that you asked. And like we said, we hope we answered them well. We hope we did, you know, help you guys learn more in general about, you know, bank accounts and credit cards and avoiding scams and all that stuff. So, so we're really glad to have you guys today. And we hope to see you tomorrow as well, because since we have a Seasider series every day, tomorrow at four, we'll be talking about working and the different regulations here at, on from BYUH about working for, for international students yeah so don't miss out on that as well so once again thank you guys mahalo and aloha, aloha.